Okay, got it. Okay, um, so I'll put some clinical context for us to all um, gather our thoughts. You heard a lot of information yesterday, uh, so we'll try to apply what we've learned yesterday and try to understand how we're gonna use this additional technology that we have at our bedside. So we'll start off with a um, woman with a new diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis and biopsy showing already stage three scarring, which is the fibrosis. Of course, Dr. Lamert gets to see her. I mean, he is famous. Uh, he, all, he sees all the VIP patients. Um, so he gets her into biochemical remission soon after, and uh, she's uh, currently on a maintenance regimen of luckily just one drug, and she's tolerating well. So her questions are, my enzymes are normal. Is the inflammation gone? My enzymes are normal. Will the fibrosis reverse? Because you know she has stage three scarring by the time she got diagnosed, and how do we answer her questions with regard to these two issues. Well, the first issue probably is easier. We look at the a AST, ALT, I mean, normal, normal. We look for 19 in a woman and 29 in a man. IgG levels, bilirubin, INR, you have a lot of blood tests that can give you that information. But how about the second question, has my fibrosis reversed? And it's hard to convince somebody to do a biopsy just to show that they have improved when it's an invasive test. So this is where we had an unmet need, and this is the, where the technology that we have, uh, we're going to use. So to give, you, to give you a context as to where this technology fits, you have to think as to what we have available. Um, so blood-based tests, we have liver function tests, which is very um, research, where we give a certain drug and we measure how much uh, it is excreted by the liver. It's not used clinically. Uh, then we have the blood test that we all, all are aware of, and then we have the imaging studies, which um, are ultrasound, CAT scan, MRI. Then we have the histology, which is the biopsy, and we'll talk a little bit about stiffness today. We also have breath tests that tell us the function of the liver. Um, it's not available clinically. So all these are clinically available and what they give us with regard to information. The inflammation, the function of the liver, imaging studies are mostly related to obstruction, stones, um, mass lesions, and the biopsy gives us injury, fibrosis, and other diagnostic information, whereas stiffness gives us mostly related to fibrosis and maybe inflammation. So some we use for diagnosis, some we use to figure out what is the prognosis, what do I anticipate, how do I explain the significance of these findings, what do I expect in the future, and some are useful for, okay, I started the treatment and is the patient better. So we have a variety of tests uh, which gives us different pieces of information. So it's important to put all this context into one context, and that's why you just don't depend on one test at a time. We have to use this together to make some sense. So what exactly is stiffness? Stiffness is the way any tissue responds to pressure. So it's just like a squishy ball, you squeeze, and uh, the way it responds, comes back to its original size and shape is the stiffness. So the more the stiff, the less the elasticity, um, and that's the property that we use. The stiffness of a tissue is measured in kilopascals. For lack of better understanding, I would say, um, people have thought that the stiffness of the liver is related to fibrosis only. But as we are increasingly recognizing, there are other factors that can influence the stiffness of the liver. As you all may know, liver is enclosed in a nice capsule. It's called Gleason's capsule. And that's why we are able to uh, do this technology, because it's in a capsule. And as the scarring in the liver progresses, the stiffness of the liver increases. And this is our current understanding that the fibrosis may be related to stiffness. But we also realize that inflammation can increase the stiffness, especially in people who may have variant syndrome where there is autoimmune hepatitis with PSC. They may have blockage in the bile ducts, 
and that can increase the stiffness because there is a backup of pressure in the liver and then the increased blood flow to the liver. That's why we recommend that at least three hours of fasting be done because after you eat, the food gets digested and there is increased blood flow to the liver and that can increase the stiffness. And also if there is a congestion, congestive heart failure, there is a backup of blood into the liver, that can increase the stiffness. So it's not necessarily just fibrosis of the liver. So for patients with autoimmune hepatitis, I would think that when there is increased stiffness, it may be related to fibrosis primarily, but perhaps if there is inflammation in the liver, the stiffness could be related to uh, inflammation too. And how do I define inflammation? Do I look at the ALT? And we don't know if ALT less than 80 is okay, or ALT should it be less than 100 for me to interpret the liver stiffness. So this is unknown, but generally use uh, 100. If it is less than that, we think maybe perhaps the, all the stiffness is related to fibrosis, but anything more than that, I'm like, okay, could be inflammation, could be fibrosis, or both. Um, the principle is, um, maybe there's no animation, but uh, this is the uh, probe, and it generates a vibration or a mechanical thump on the skin, and it, that wave passes through the liver and it uses the ultrasound to measure the speed of the mechanical shear wave that goes through the liver. And depending upon the speed at which the wave moves through the liver, that's called shear wave speed, with using this formula, they measure the, estimate the stiffness of the liver. If the wave moves slow, um, there is not much scarring, but if there is a lot of scarring because of the stiffness, the wave moves faster. So based on the speed at which, we look back and figure out how much would be the fibrosis. There are many ways of measuring elastography. Elastography is a medical imaging that tells us the stiffness of the tissue. Um, based on how you generate the vibration, if it is mechanical, or sometimes you can use an ultrasound to generate the vibration, sometimes you can use physio physiological motion, depending upon the imaging, whether you use ultrasound, whether you use MRI, and whether you use um, just a single point uh, uh, measurement or you use a continuous measurement. All of them are called stiffness, all of them give in kilopascal. So if you go to Mayo, they may use MR elastography. We use this, which is vibration control transient elastography, which is the fibro scan. And if you are at a different location, you may use different um, device. For example, this is an ultrasound device that uses um, ultrasound to generate the vibration and it measures. Now, why this is important is um, this is expensive. This is expensive, but this may be cheap because this equipment is already in the hospital and all they need to buy is a software. So anytime we ask for a fibro scan, hospital administration says, well, we have this machine, why don't you use this? But you get a value from this may not be the same as value from MRI, and if you get a value from MRI, it's not the same as fibro scan. So you may go to one institution and they may tell you, you have liver stiffness of this much, and you come to IU and we are using fibro scan and we give you a different number, it doesn't mean that we are, you are getting conflicting data, it's just that you're using different technology, but all of us say it's liver stiffness, unless you know what technology is being used to measure the liver stiffness. So this is what we have, it's in the clinic, it's a device um, that has revolutionized how we practice uh, hepatology, because you have a patient coming in, you do the fibro scan, you get a lot of information, and you're able to counsel the patient uh, immediately in the clinic, so, there's no wait time, it's re reproducible, it's non-invasive, and um, it gives 100 times more uh, 
um, volume of information than a liver biopsy. For example, you do a liver biopsy, you're basically getting one in 50,000 part of the liver to view, and you're making all these decisions based on one in 50,000, whereas FibroScan is one in 500, so approximately 100 times more volume of tissue that you are able to interrogate with this technology. We have two probes in the adult world. For this conference, we also had the uh, pediatric probe, and uh, this is the amount of volume of tissue that is interrogated, which is both same, but you need the extra large probe to overcome the subcutaneous fat uh, to reach the liver. Uh, medium probe has been available for almost 15 years, to me, maybe even 20 years in France, and we only got the um, FibroScan in uh, United States in 2013 because of the extra large probe that was needed. So what exactly is a normal liver stiffness? In this study, there was um, all normal, apparently healthy patients, self-declared. Um, median liver stiffness was 5.5 plus or minus 1.6 kilopascals. Um, in men, maybe a little higher. So we are currently using in US um, seven kilopascals as a normal number. Sometimes um, uh, some institutions may use 6.5. Uh, but up to seven may be normal. And you will soon realize this is the stiffness on your x-axis. These are the different diseases, and these are the different stages of fibrosis. You will know that for stiffness of eight, in fatty liver, it could correspond to stage two, but the eight in hep C could be completely different or sorry, this is cholestatic liver disease, which is, uh, oh sorry, this is hep C, right? Yeah, so for the same number, you could get different stages of fibrosis. So it's dependent on the disease, dependent on the inflammation, dependent on other things. So it's very important to re realize the nuances in interpreting the liver stiffness. Here you have an MR elastography. Um, strangely enough, this patient with biopsy-proven cirrhosis had a normal appearing liver on the MRI, high enzymes, and the stiffness was 6.4 kilopascals. For fibroscan, that's normal, but for an MRI, you have to multiply it three times to make it equal to fibroscan, so it's probably around 20. And I'm not sure if that 20 kilopascals, how much of it is related to inflammation here. So. This information is out there, it's new, people are struggling to understand how do we use this technology. So what is the role of FibroScan in autoimmune hepatitis? This is one study where you see these are seven patients. These are the ALTs, this is over time. ALTs improving over time, sorry, this is liver stiffness which is improving over time. These are the ALTs improving over time. As the ALTs get better, stiffness gets better. So possibly the difference between this stiffness and this stiffness is more inflammation rather than fibrosis. Here you have biopsy proven inflammation and stiffness. And the correlation between stiffness and in inflammation is more in acute, but that correlation disappears over time and it correlates more with fibrosis. So this clearly tells you in the acute stage it relates to inflammation and at a later time point it may relate to fibrosis. Here, if you want what number indicates what degree of fibrosis, this is one study from relatively recent data. So here between stage one and the rest, 10.5 kilopascals, between one and two versus three and four, 12.1. Between one and three and four, it is 19. But I have no idea what were the ALTs in this study and whether they were all in biochemical remission and uh, whether this population would be different from my population. Here again, inflammation, 
This is the liver stiffness before treatment, which is here around 15 to 16. The same patients after treatment, it comes down to eight or nine. So again, it, possibly before treatment, inflammation and fibrosis, and later on, maybe only fibrosis. So this study was, is fresh off press, where they looked at the relationship between change in the ALT over time and change in the liver stiffness over time. And they can predict if the ALT is 200 at the time of diagnosis and your stiffness is 20, okay, if this ALT comes down from 200 to 40 or 19, how much of that would translate to the change in the liver stiffness? And can I subtract that much stiffness to see if the patient has fibrosis at this time? So we are trying to figure out if we can do this here at IU. So there are a lot of nuances. As I said, this is a study where they looked at food and the increase in the stiffness at the various stages of fibrosis. And as you see, within 60 minutes, the stiffness goes up uniformly. And that's why when the technology first came out, we said at least two hours of fasting. But then this was done with a protein shake. But if a patient is coming to my clinic after a stop at fast food um, and upsizing whatever, <laughs> uh, is two hours fasting really enough? Maybe not. So, we, are, we pushed it to three hours, but ideally, um, the longer the fasting, the more chance that postprandial blood flow may not affect the liver stiffness. There are also many technical issues. Um, you know, Regina has done so many scans here because she's the world's expert on how to do the fibro scan. She single-handedly performed more than three, 4,000 fibro scans. Um, so she has been very good at minimizing the technical issues so we get the actual measurement. And if you go to a new center and they just got a fibro scan and they don't have an expert and the person doing the fibro scan has done only 10 fibro scans before and you get a value, how do you interpret with that? How do you grapple with that? We also looked at other things where we summarized all the um, effects. One thing is recent alcohol use. You have three glasses of wine, two glasses of wine, two days before your fibro scan. How does that play into your liver stiffness? So those are the other things that may influence. So if we go back and look at what did FDA look before approving this technology? And if you look at the wording in the regulatory documents, Fibroscan is indicated for non-invasive measurement of shear wave speed at this hertz in the liver. That's all they say. They don't claim that they are measuring fibrosis. They don't claim that, that any particular number correlates to this much fibrosis. All they are saying is we measured the shear wave speed, and this may be used as an aid to clinical management of patients with liver disease. So they gave the technology out, and they said, doctors, you figure out how to use this. Um, so then we have to go back and look, okay, what has other groups done with this technology? What has their experience been? Can I translate that, tech, that experience to mine? And there was only medium probe present before, so all the papers that we look at was all from medium probe, and now we are extrapolating that information to extra large probe and different diseases. So there's a learning curve. So you may hear, well, we, this is experimental. Really, it's not experimental. The technology is approved by the FDA. It's just that we don't know how to use this, no, these numbers. So that's the research that we are trying to do. So then another new technology that came along with liver stiffness is the controlled attenuation parameter, where the, as the ultrasound wave is going through the liver, um, it uh, dissipates, and if there is more fat, it dissipates faster, so it's me basically measuring the attenuation rate. If the attenuation rate is high, it means that there's more fat in the liver. So same time, 
you, we do the deliver the shear wave, and at that around the same time, you get the stiffness, which suppose you know corresponds to fibrosis and cap that corresponds to steatosis. Here we have technology within few minutes, you know the amount of fat in the liver, you know the amount of fibrosis in the liver. So that's really changed how we practice medicine with regard to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, not autoimmune, but non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So here we have some numbers. So cap, if there is no fat, we generally use 225 decibels per meter. Anything less than that means absolutely no fat in the liver. Anything more than 300, moderate to severe amount of fat in the liver. So this is the screenshot of what Regina is looking at when she's doing. She takes 10 measurements, and the average or the median of the 10 is given. It's not based on just one measurement. This is the stiffness, this is the cap, and then there is some quality control that we get, and this is the type of the probe that she used. This is what um, your report may look like today. So what does my FibroScan report mean today? It has two numbers. Elastance is the stiffness, kilopascals. And this is the cap. This is the decibels per meter. You have 10 values, and the median is of these, from these. Number of attempts she had to do to get your 10 values. And uh, that's basically what. And then this number has to be less than 30% to make sure that the values we are getting are consistent. Another thing that we are realizing is the change over time. Right now, we don't know the number what it means with regard to amount of fibrosis because we understand that many other things can change, can affect the stiffness. But how about change of stiffness over time, change of cap over time? That can tell us whether we are moving in the right direction or not. For example, um, a new diagnosis of autoimmune hepatitis, you do the biopsy, there's stage three scarring, just our first patient. You got her into biochemical remission and the stiffness improves. Um, and then a year later, the patient comes back and says, okay, I've maintained my remission. I'm taking this drug, tolerating well. Can you tell me if I move from stage three to stage two? How can you g give me something? I know the enzymes have not been a problem. And then I could repeat a fibro scan and I say last year was 20, right now it's eight. Yeah, I can discount you know, 10 for inflammation, but still it's, eight, and next year we do, it's six, and I feel very reassured that this fibrosis in the liver is reversing. Autoimmune hepatitis is one of the conditions where fibrosis in the liver can reverse if you maintain a good biochemical response. So in this meeting, I have some data for you. More than 80 scans were performed last. This is the distribution from this meeting. Female, male, blue is normal, Green is abnormal. 50-50 of the pa female participants who underwent FibroScan in this meeting are normal. 50 have abnormal. I use the cutoff of 6.5, which is a very stringent criteria. Um, with regard to men, uh, more were abnormal. I looked at the fat. Um, female, more had abnormal CAP score. So this is the amount of concomitant fatty liver with autoimmune hepatitis. So imagine you have autoimmune hepatitis, you're taking the medicines, liver enzymes have improved. Five years later, you gain weight, you develop fatty liver, and your enzymes are creeping up to 65, 70. And you're wondering, is my autoimmune hepatitis coming back, or is it? fatty liver, uh, what do I do? Do I increase my Imuran? My IgG has not changed much. Are you comfortable ignoring this ALT? Or what other recommendations can you give me, doc? And this really helped us because if the CAP score is high, we may say, hey, you know, cut down the carb, avoid high fructose corn syrup, aim to lose 10% of the weight next one year, and we'll monitor your ALT because I, I think that 
maybe it's the NAFLD that is causing the ALT elevation rather than the autoimmune hepatitis. In the past, we had no choice but to rebiopsy. But now we are able to avoid a liver biopsy because of some additional information we are getting. And in this age of download an app, disruptive technology, Fibroscan is very similar. I mean, you look at the 6th century BC, the living are soft and yielding, the dead are rigid and stiff. It's the, basically the same concept. We st stop touching the patient and use technology. <laughs> at least we don't pass on the CDF. <laughs> so some take home points, liver stiffness is a physical property of liver tissue. It's not uh, fibrosis, it's just a property of the liver tissue that we are measuring. Uh, timing of liver, measuring the liver stiffness is important for proper interpretation. Other factors can affect LSM. It could be good tool for fibrosis, inflammation, response to treatment, CAP score may evaluate concomitant fatty liver. So this has become very practical and useful for us. So this is what I have for you, and last time I presented Hunter for you, now he's all grown up. <laughs> this was yesterday, thank you very much.